most children are hungry. Many of them are hungry. Many of them are feeling cold. The needs are growing at a very, very rapid pace. And unfortunately, our funding is not matching the growing needs. حياتي بعد الفاجعة اللي صارت معنا صارت أسوأ بكتير. تذكر الجثث اللي كانت حوالي. بعد فترة وجيزة ببطل في مكان نقبر فيه الأمواتنا. بتمنى. أن ما أشوف حالي حتى مثل ما عم بجرني ابني بجرني ويأخذني على فرعم من دون مؤاخذة قلت لك ولو على التراب Generations of Palestinians have called Lebanon home. Many fled here during the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. It's been a struggle to survive. But the current level of poverty is unprecedented, the result of one of the worst economic crises in recent history. And the UN agency that's supposed to support them has been crippled by a shortage of funds. Children are hungry, and many people are jobless, while others die at sea. This is the reality for Lebanon's Palestinians. The majority live in what's still known as refugee camps. Largely segregated and marginalized, it's a community on the fringes of society. What were once tent settlements are now overcrowded, built-up areas. There's a lack of facilities and poor housing. Trapped, at times resented, the story of these people is one of despair. It's another generation of Palestinians growing up in exile. And it's a difficult time. Lebanon's economy has collapsed. Its repercussions are felt by all in the country. But restrictions faced by the oldest refugee population in the world, particularly on their employment, adds to their vulnerability. We are witnessing many children a big number of children coming to school without breakfast. They don't have enough pocket money to buy something to eat. They come hungry to school. This is something we are facing newly. We haven't seen such a, a big crisis in food uh, sufficiency or in balanced diet sufficiency. This is something new. We haven't witnessed such things. Uh, students come during the first period early in the morning, they suffer of abdominal pain. Uh, we ask them if they are suffering of some illness or so, they say, no, we, had, we hadn't have dinner or we hadn't have breakfast. Uh, they don't have enough food at home. The cold weather approached. Uh, many children come to school without shoes. They wear sandals or uh, no socks. Uh, they don't wear warm clothes. The UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees known as UNRWA, has become a lifeline for people here. Education is among the services the UN agency provides. But a budget crisis means it's struggling to keep its schools open. And there's a need for additional ones. Schools are operating double shifts. Some of these students used to attend public and private schools before their parents could no longer afford it. في أطفال عم بتقول لأهليها إنه ما بدي المصروف. أنا ماما بابا ما بدي المصروف. أنا لأنه عم لأن الطفل الفلسطيني عم بيحس قديش معاناة أبوه وأمه إنه مش قادرين يأمنون أبسط الحاجات اليومية. هذا الشيء عم بخلي الولد ينحرم من طفولته. تخيل انه احيانا في اسر عم بتقول لك صرنا نباتيين انه بس اكلنا حشائش وحبوب يعني حتى اللحمه والدجاج صارت من الاحلام Nearly all Palestinian families are living on less than 2 US dollars a day. Since the beginning of the year, the poverty level increased from 70 to more than 
and UNRWA statistics show among the 210,000 registered refugees, 68% are eating fewer meals, as the average cost of food increased six times in recent months, one of the highest increases in the world. It's not just food. The cost of water, fuel, electricity, gas, transport and health care are three to five times higher. If you look at uh, the, the, the poverty that is now universal, we're at 93 percent poverty amongst Palestinians. Unemployment is skyrocketing. The hyperinflation, people cannot make ends meet. Those who at least used to work a little bit here and there, despite the restrictions on the right to work for Palestinians, are not able to work nowadays. And even if they do work, everything that they uh, earn in a day uh, would, would not even buy them uh, two packs of bread, if you look at uh, the, the high price of, of basic commodities. So everyone now is relying on UNRWA. It's complete, utter dependency on the agency. And the agency is not able to meet all the needs of the people. The prices of the medications are simply unaffordable. We cover hospitalization up to a certain level for very costly interventions. So what happens to the refugee who has to pay the, you know, the, the remaining of a hospital bill? It's simply unthinkable. Migrants continue to leave from the shores of northern Lebanon. The United Nations says the number of people who departed or tried to has nearly tripled since 2020. I'm babki. Here, بعد ما صدوم لاني شوفت جتات وشوفت مشهد صعب صعب كتير يعني بعده عم بوجع لي قلبي. إيه تعبان وحبيت أساعد الاثنين هذون اللي قلت لك عنن. بس ما كان نهار ما ما شفتن بالليل يعني بعده هذا مأثر علي وأثر علي هذا الولد اللي أنقذته من ترجع قالوا لي ما يعني الحمد لله شو نسوي We first met Ibrahim Mansour in September, a survivor of Lebanon's worst migrant boat tragedy in years. The 30-year-old was trying to reach Europe in search of a better life. Months later, we visited Ibrahim at home. And like many in this country, he lives in darkness. The nearly bankrupt state barely provides power, and many families can't afford private generators. Ibrahim's still in bed. He's still in pain. More than 100 people died when the overpacked boat capsized off the coast of Syria after setting sail from the shores of northern Lebanon. Among them were Palestinian refugees. Some are still missing. ابني طلع مركب الموت زي ما بتعرفوا عرفت العالم كلها هذا المركب الهجرة 
واللي رغم المعاناة يعني من اللي احنا فيها وقلة الشغل وعدم المبالاة وما في حدا بيسأل عن شعبنا وعن أبناء مخيمنا اضطر إنه بعد ما يئس اضطر إنه يهاجر وما في طريق لأن هجرة غيرها بالطريقة هاي طريقة اللي هي طريق البحر وحصل اللي حصل صار اللي صار المجزرة حصلت وما حدا التفت علينا يعني احنا عم نركض بدينا واجرينا لنعرف مصير اولادنا Young children were among the victims. Ibrahim told us he remembers seeing some of their bodies. هذول ثلاثة ماتوا الصغار. أنا أول واحدة شفتها ميتة هي شفت جدتها. هي هي الصغيرة. هي بنت أسامة اللي كان يسوق فينا الكابتن. Several dozen of the people on board the migrant boat came from Nahar Berid, one of 12 official Palestinian refugee camps. It used to be one of the most prosperous until it was nearly destroyed in 2007. More than a decade later, scars of the most severe internal fighting since the end of Lebanon's civil war in 1990 remain. For three months, there was violence and heavy aerial and artillery bombardment between the army and the Palestinian group Fatah al-Islam. The army prevailed, but many of the people who were caught in the conflict are still displaced. Reconstruction has been slow, and tight security around the camp has restricted movement and isolated it economically. But the crisis is not only affecting the living. وما زال ابناء مخيم نهر البارد يعيشون معاناه تداعيات حرب 2007 اللي ما زالت مستمره حتى اليوم يعيش اهالي مخيم نهر البارد الذي يقدر عددهم باكثر من 30 الف نسمه هن عايشين اموات فلا بدنا نركن ان نسلط الضوء نحن على مشكله رئيسيه انه نحن الان يعني بعد فتره وجيزه ببطل في مكان نقبر فيه الامواتنا احنا الان في المقبره تسمى معروفه بالمقبره القديمه اول مقبره بمخيم نهر البارد منذ اللجأة او منذ تاسيس المخيم بالخمسينات الان وصلنا لمرحله انه اللي عنده حاله وفاه وله حاله حدا متوفي من اكثر من 20 سنه عم بيضطروا اهليته يفتحوا القبر وبتوجيه يعني من الجهات المعنيه انه يفتحوا القبر ويدفنوا فوق اقاربهم حسب يعني ما بنص عليه الشرع الاسلام بعد فتره بعوش ممكن بعش ممكن لان خلص بيكون يعني نسل او شيء عبى القبر بيكون مع بطل في فترات طويله The majority of Palestinians in Lebanon are confined to a specific area. The land allotted to them by the government has barely changed since 1948. Forbidden from building outwards, people are not allowed to bring in construction materials. There's a long list of restrictions on a community the Lebanese state doesn't want to encourage to stay. There are laws banning many graduates like Mohammed Najjar from working in their profession. Palestinians say they are trapped, unable to return to their homeland, find jobs here or go elsewhere. I hope to work in the economy, of course. I have been working for years and years and I've been working for a long time and I've been working for a long time. If I have to work for a long time, for example, for a long time, for example, for a long time, for a long time, the people who work with me are not a little bit of a problem, but I don't have a right, for example, like any person in Lebanon. I don't have a right, I don't have a right, معاش مثل مثل اي شخص لبناني او شيء بس هي القصه انه ان سمح لنا نحن انه نقدر نطلع من هالبوكس اللي احنا فيه ضمن المخيمات او شيء Life isn't easy for Palestinians who have long complained of what they call discriminatory and racist laws against them. طيب الفلسطيني بلبنان ما طالب الجنسيه يعني ما بتذكر اي حاله فلسطيني طلع طلب الجنسيه طالبين حقوق انسانيه مش اكثر والحقوق الانسانيه اذا اعطيتها لشخص مش يعني انت وطنته هذا شيء مختلف عندك شباب بده يشتغل عندك شباب بده ينتج شباب بده يتزوج شباب بده يبني مستقبله ما حنقول مستقبل نقول اقل الحياه المعيشيه 
It's International Solidarity Day for Palestinians. Palestinians never miss an occasion to remind the world about their cause. They've kept it alive more than 70 years on. There is defiance. There are calls for resistance against Israel, who they blame for preventing them from returning to their lands. And there are repeated assurances that Palestinians don't want to permanently settle in Lebanon. Lebanon <laughs> Lebanese politicians have long argued giving Palestinians their full civil rights would undermine their right to return to their homes in Palestine, which is enshrined by a United Nations General Assembly resolution. The responsibility of the Palestinians goes mainly not to Lebanese authorities, but to the international community, to the UNRWA, to all these organizations that are supposed to help the Lebanese, these Palestinians uh, in their presence in camps and as refugees. This is where the money should, should come from, this is where support should come from, and not draining on additional draining on Lebanese resources, which are already very limited and uh, very risky. So I think that there are no um, racism, there are some restrictions due to the fact that there is a risk of uh, naturalization or implementation of the Palestinians in Lebanon and this is something that is unacceptable. The Palestinian presence deepened internal divisions in Lebanon. They've been involved and caught up in this country's conflicts. Some blame them for being a volatile element in the civil war of the 1980s while others supported their militarization in the 1970s. Back then, Ibrahim Mansour was among those who took part in the armed struggle that involved raids from Lebanon into Israel. Now, they're largely confined to camps, but for them, the struggle hasn't ended. <laughs> Refugees have long blamed Israel for not respecting their right to return and the international community for largely ignoring it. And now they fear there is a deliberate strategy against them through ending the work of UNRWA. For many, the agency, which is mandated to protect and provide assistance to refugees, pending a just and lasting solution to their plight, is the living evidence of the Palestinian cause. <laughs> For decades, UNRWA has been a source of survival for Palestinian refugees. Now, it's the agency's survival that's at risk. When it began operations in 1950, it was responding to the needs of about 750,000 refugees from Palestine. Today, some 5 million are eligible for services in Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, and the occupied Palestinian territory. Hoda Samra has been with the agency for more than two decades. She has seen firsthand how chronic budget shortfalls have affected assistance. 
back in 1997, our uh, focus was on how to improve living conditions, how to uh, provide university scholarships to the young Palestine refugees who wanted to build a better future. We were concerned about how to pro provide, you know, good quality education, vocational training, uh, prospects of work. We were uh, defending and we were fighting and making advocacy for an improved right to work, at least easing the restrictions on the right to work. We were looking at a complete different set of priorities, so to say. The picture is completely different today. We are asked now to provide state-like services to a whole community of Palestinian refugees in Lebanon that is sinking with the whole country that is sinking, literally. And uh, our resources are meager. An added strain to the agency and overcrowded camps was the arrival of more than 30,000 Palestinians from Syria who escaped war in the past decade. And they may be here for a while. <laughs> يعني يدوب هلا عايشين كل يوم بيوم وما فينا مثلا ندخر مبلغ لنروح نصلح بيتنا نحن نازل على الارض It's a story of hardship that you hear time and time again in these camps. Palestinians are sometimes known as the forgotten people. Indeed help is out of reach for many of those who need it most. Among the uh, most affected children with the crisis are special educational needs children. Uh, those children usually were placed in private schools with few numbers of students. Uh, now uh, the parents cannot pay for the, their kids in private institutions. Yes, Reha. Countless stories of despair, but there are also stories of survival and hope. Or something else. Yes, Asil. Don't eat in the fish. Our school, we have a vision impaired student. Her name is Asil Sharif. Asil is eight years old. She's very intelligent, very smart, very talented student. Uh, she needs to uh, study using Braille. Uh, UNRWA has provided the equipment and UNRWA has provided the teacher. Uh, there is hope for Asil, but uh, maybe some other uh, cases, some other children with more demanding needs uh, are left at home or cannot be helped.